Good afternoon. Today is Thursday, February 8th. We had the regular meeting of the Grand Rapids Economic Development Authority today. The biggest item on our agenda was to approve the work plan for 2024. Um, every year, we, we at, towards the end of the previous year, we go through kind of a list of, do a little brainstorming session and come up with things that we we all as a group think should be on our work plan going forward. This year we broke them down into some different segments and kind of put some different timelines on them as whether they're short-term, medium-term, or long-term. And the segments that we, we decided on were industry advancement and support, transportation, redevelopment, and downtown. And then uh, there's some administrative items. And then we also today broke a few out into workforce kind of workforce housing and workforce development issues. Um, some of the industry advancement and support issues, um, some of the things we've been talking a lot about lately include L&M, uh, Yanmar's expansion, the Highway 35 project, um, supporting the wood products industry going forward, and then, of course, partnering with um, our neighboring communities on helping to redevelop and, redevelop and replace those jobs that will be lost at the Boswell site eventually. Some of the other long-term and medium-term issues included housing, um, a housing shortage, workforce shortage, and these are the items that we moved to that, that additional category of workforce, uh, child care shortages, and then just main, making sure that we as a community maintain an adequate industrial site inventory. So as we continue to develop some of these sites, um, we need to make sure that we've got a, a, an adequate inventory going forward of industrial property so that we're ready for the, that next development that comes along. Some of the transportation issues that we talked about were the highway corridor improvements, especially on Highway 2 going west. Um, you know, there's some vacant properties there now that we hope to redevelop in the, in the near term. Um, and just some of the blight in that corridor, if there's ways that we as a community and we as an EDA can look to help redevelop some of those areas and, and just improve them to, to um, improve that corridor. And then, of course, as we've talked about in the past, we'd really like to advocate for some um, improvement on the Highway 2 corridor between here and Duluth. And sometimes, we've, not sometimes, but we've even expanded that to, you know, is there a way that we can get a four-lane corridor from Grand Forks to Duluth? Um, just to improve our transportation corridor and improve our, our industrial customers, our industrial um, citizens, better access to markets. Um, then uh, redevelopment in downtown included um, implementing the downtown plan that we worked on last year. Um, we've started to develop a, a downtown group that's really going to work to develop that down or to implement that downtown plan. Um, we want to continue to support our small businesses in the downtown area and the community um, and help with any improvements that we can through our storefront improvement loans and then also our ADA, um, um, our ADA accessibility grants and loans. Um, and then just kind of redevelop some of those strategic sites around the community, whether they be downtown or outside the downtown. We also approved the sale of land in the Great River Acres for one home development. And then we discussed the interest in another of those those spaces. The Great River Acres development is near the uh, the new elementary school on the on the golf course road. So we're we're starting to see more and more development in that neighborhood, which is really exciting. We did get some updates from Rob regarding housing activity. Oppidan Development is still working to do, to work to develop a 132 unit workforce housing um, complex, and that would also be near the uh, the elementary school on the golf course road. West Elementary, and somewhat kind of behind that, closer to the pillars. They've, they're really looking to get some gap financing from the IRRRB. Uh, the MHFA has some programs for workforce housing. And then, of course, there will probably be a TIF and tax abatement application to the city that we'll look at in the long run um, to help close that gap and make that project worthwhile. Um, the Forest Lake site, the former Forest Lake School site, is continuing to be developed. Um, there, um, the Itasca County HRA um, is going to develop another eight homes, bringing the total that they've developed to 16. Um, Habitat for Humanity also has two, lights, two lots on that site. They've developed one so far, or working to develop one, and then we'll, in the long run, develop the, the second one. So of the 21 total sites on the forest, former Forest Lake Elementary School site, um, 
18 of those are either currently under development or will be soon under development. So that's really exciting for our community as well as we look to, to develop more workforce housing. Um, and then Rob told us about some conversations he's had about Block 20 and 21, which is the site across from the library. Um, that site in 2010, I believe, we did some um, soil remediation there. So we've been really looking to develop that site over the years, and we're excited about that opportunity. And that was about it for today, other than Rob did also tell us that the Highway 35 project, they are closing on their purchase of the former Ainsworth building tomorrow. Um, they're working on their final engineering and looking to begin phase one of that project in April or May. So that's another exciting development that we're watching closely and looking forward to, to helping move forward. So thank you and have a great day.